All right, everybody. So today we have a Neotech 2515C, and this was sent in by Randy, and it says this is Neotech from uh, Area 51 that is showing no picture. So we'll try and get this fixed up for him, but I don't know if no picture means it turns on and you get no raster, or it turns on and you get no heater voltage, if uh, you know the, the video connector was unhooked. I don't know what no picture means. It could mean any number of things. So I did some inspection, and it, this is a completely unmolested chassis. And what I mean by that is that no one's ever touched it before. No one's done reflow, no one's done cap kit, no one's done flyback change out. I'm the first person to ever work on it, and that's an awesome thing because now we don't gotta worry about someone's previous rework causing us headaches or possibly inducing a problem. So the first thing I always do with these is uh, I give it a good inspection, and verify there were no broken pads or traces or joints. Everything is visually intact. There's no loose components, things like that. The only thing I really noticed is this burn mark here. There's a burn, a pretty significant burn right here on this uh, header pin here from the horizontal. This is charred and there's a big divot in the white plastic. So I don't know if there was, you know, I have no idea how this could have happened because the other side of the board here shows no no damage. This is that pin here. Right? Here's the burn mark. So what's going on there? Why would that happen? I don't see any reason why that would have occurred. Um, there's nothing that I can see that would cause that. And I don't think I did any continuity on it, but now that we have it here, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, it's fine. So, you know, we got a lot of heat here across C42, but that's, or 41, but that's normal. So what we have going on here is that I don't know what's going on with that burn mark right there. So we need to verify that this works and get it operational. And I want to let Randy know that that burn mark is there because if he hooks this back up and it, and he's got a, a shorted yoke or some type of oxidation in his connector or bad tube or who knows what, uh, that very well could just cause this problem again. So we need to make sure we ask him to check his yoke and everything because this is a problem. However, it's not the problem of why the chassis is dead. The reason the chassis is dead, well not dead, I should say no picture, I kind of led into that by accident. What I meant to say was the reason it has no picture is because our power supply is dead. And the power supply is completely, totally, utterly dead. And, you know, in the past, from my personal previous experience, I know that when the, the power supply is totally dead, it's 99% sure that the uh, IC101, the switch mode power supply chip, is at fault. Normally when you turn these on, uh, well, let me go back. To, to properly test this, uh, the power supply, you need to lift the leg of R117. So R117 is this guy here, and the way to test this, you take R117 out of circuit. Right here where it points to DC, not, not R119, R117. You lift this leg out of R117 out of the circuit, and this is the output of the B plus from the power supply to the rest of the chassis. So by taking that out of circuit, you have isolated the output of the power supply to the rest of the chassis. So you can work on this unfettered on the bench. Uh, you never ever want to hook this back up and run the chassis on the bench without a, without a tube because at that point the rest of the output is hooked up and you can blow a flyback or cause any damage to any number of other things. You'll have high voltage coming out of the flyback from the cup and you'll be arcing back to the... It'll be a very bad situation. You never want to do that. Uh, the only time you ever power it up without a tube is if you have the B-plus isolated from the rest of the chassis. So we have R117 out and you take a lead here and you hook it onto 117 and you take the other side and you take your light bulb and touch it to the frame or the heat sink in this case and then we touch our light bulb it should light up if our power supply is working so i have removed the original chip and put a socket in there and then put the original chip back in now when you first turn these on in this situation you should hear a little quick chirp a chirp or doop you should hear a, a tick or, or zap or or whatever you should hear one little quick tick of this thing coming to life uh, and then you should be able to just touch this here and go to here. But with this original chip in here, I'll turn it on and you listen for anything. One, two, three. Nothing. No tick, no chirp, nothing. Back off, I'll turn it back on. One, two, three. Nothing. Dead. 
We have our power hooked up and it's plugged in the wall. So if we go to here and touch this, nothing, nothing at all. So we have a bad switch mode power supply chip, IC101. In my experience, when you have a totally dead, does nothing like this, it's almost always that chip. So now if we were to remove that chip out of the socket, Okay, then I have a bag here with three of the proper chips, so I've already got one out. And we'll put this back in place here. All right, and we'll settle it down in there to make sure it's seated properly. And now with a replacement chip in there, uh, we should flip the switch and hear a quick little chirp. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. One, two, three. I don't know if it came through on the camera, but I heard a little chirp. Now, if we touch this to here and touch the, po the positive, ta-da! Look at that. Lights right up. So, turn it back off. When you've got a completely, totally, utterly dead, does no chirp, does nothing at all, you got a light bulb test is nothing, uh, switch mode power supply chip is almost always the cause. Now, if you turn this on, you hear a tick, 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 tick. Uh, you can be R106 is the likely culprit. So most of the time, I'd say nine out of 10 times when you have a power supply problem, it's either gonna be the switch mode power supply chip or R106. One of those two is almost always the problem. Because R106 can go out and kill the, the IC101 and vice versa. So yeah, now that we have a functional system, uh, we can uh, proceed with our repair. I wanted to showcase that before we went further. So I'm confident that that was our problem. I'm gonna hang on to this to show the owner. Um, but now that we have that replaced, I'm going to do the cap kit because the caps are all original. Like I say, no one's touched this. So the original caps, original flyback, I'm going to do the full reflow, the cap kit, leave the original flyback installed because I want to make sure it doesn't start drifting focus or brightness. If it doesn't, we can leave it in. If it does, we'll replace it. But I'm going to do the cap kit and uh, get R117 back in circuit, do the reflow, get more inspection done. And then when I come back, I'll show everything uh, done and then we'll do some actual testing if it all passes. We'll have it a nice, quick, easy repair here. So hopefully anyway. All right, so I'm gonna cut away, get all the work done. When I come back, I'll have, well, all of it done, ready to show off, and then we'll do some testing and see how it turns out. Well, and just like that, a little over an hour later, the full cap kit and reflow is now done. Uh, of course, the all the caps on the neck board and all the caps on the main board. I uh, got the full reflow and everything has been hit and it's good to go. So now it's time to get it on the tube and fire it up, cross our fingers and see what kind of image we get or if it works at all. Let's find out. All right, all hooked up with the uh, anode neck yoke ground power video and remote. We have our test pattern generator on. I've got the proper connections here to go to the factory connector for the video input. Uh, one thing I noticed while I was getting this all hooked up, I don't know if I go back and look at the footage, but the focus wire broke off of the neck, so I had to re-solder that on there. Uh, maybe in a few seconds ago when you saw it, maybe we can see that the wire's broken off, but that's what happens when you flip it over, flip it over, flip it over, flip it over while you're doing the work. So it's important to double check everything before you power it up. Uh, and we are sitting on a frame here for a uh, U5000 tube. The U5000 is compatible with the, let's just say the K7000, the 7400, the U2000, the U5000, the Henrex Polo, and the Neotech 2515C or standard res 2500 series are all compatible with each other and interchangeable. So you can use any of these chassis on any of these tubes interchangeable and be just fine. So we're sitting here on this. We're not touching anything. We should be good to go. So Okay, uh, we're set up to read B plus as well, and we want to adjust it properly, so let's uh, try this out here. I believe it's supposed to be 117. I can't recall offhand, I'll look it up, but let's just see what it reads now. So here we go, one, two, three. Oh, that's not good. Can we hear that? Listen. Something is still wrong. Let's turn it off before something bad happens. So interesting. Well, I know I didn't put any caps in backwards and everything is reflowed and I don't have any bridges. I know I did, I don't, because I went through painstakingly and double checked and verified like I always do. I never show that on camera, but I always do that. So we got to figure out, uh, that's a noise that I've never quite honestly heard before. 
So I'm going to pull the chassis back off, redo the light bulb test. If that's good, then I know it's something on the output side. Uh, I wonder... Let's try tweaking that B plus pot a little bit. Let's uh, get down in here and tweak this a bit. Maybe the B plus pot is bad. I've had that happen multiple times. And let's set it roughly there. Let's see what happens now. No, it just I just got a flash of 131. I got 131 very instantly. And it's back to doing what it was doing. So let's go back that way. Nope. Hmm. Let's try one more time here. And let's go there. Nope. Okay, well, let me get this back off, do some troubleshooting, and see what I can figure out. Okay, so I found the problem. There is the secondary horizontal hold pot. There's a main horizontal hold pot on the adjustment board right here, H hold. But there's a secondary one right there. Uh, does H frequency right here? H frequency. So now this was tweaked all the way that way completely. And I get a little. It's hard to see there, but that was tweaked 100% all the way to the left there. And I had to move it to the middle, roughly right there. So these chassis, if you tweak them, the horizontal hold, if you tweak it too far one way or the other, where it throws the image off the screen, uh, it goes into shutdown. And I ran into that last time and I overlooked that this time. So after moving the pot to the center position, uh, it should work now because what was happening was, is with that pot tweaked all the way completely, I guess, to the left, I wouldn't know, that's, yeah, all the way to the left, completely maxed out. So somebody, I think, was troubleshooting this and just tweaking pots, and that was maxed all the way to the left. So that was sending the image way too far off the screen. It was going into shutdown. That's what that click, click, click was, that odd noise. So I put that back to center. After putting that back to center, let's get this set up here properly. Um, we can, oh, and also in the meantime, I verified that the B plus should be set to 125. So we're all set up here. Let's turn this back on, uh, meter to volts DC, and let's fire this up one more time and see what happens now with that horizontal frequency pot set to center position instead of being maxed out all the way to the left. So here we go. One, two, three. Oh, come on. What in tarnation it's doing it again? Oh, it just clicked to life and we're at 123. Okay, hang on. Let me uh, let me adjust this again here a little bit more this way. Let's go right there. So let's see if that makes it zap to life immediately here. Let's try again here. One, two, three. No. Something is wrong with this where it has to... That is odd. It has to go... Every time it, it goes dink, 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 it gets, it gets more energized and it goes dink, 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 and then it comes to life. But, see, that's our issue. So, I, th I still think it's this pot adjustment. Let's go about right there instead. Here we go. One, two, three. Nope. Hmm. See, in there, it just came on. I've never seen this happen before. See, we're still... If I adjust the H hold on here... Yeah, see... So we'll have to leave the H hold on the adjustment or remote pot right there. And you can still see it. I need to tweak this while it's running. And I don't want to damage anything. But if I get down here on this pot and tweak it while it's running. Hmm. 
Hmm. See, it's a combination of this pot with the remote pot. Okay, there we go. So that that was the H hole. This this pot here. You want to move it? That's the image we want. See how it's got a triple image? Now with this triple image, I need to adjust the frequency pot, and I'll bet you we can get this to lock in here. Oh, no. Man, let's leave it right there and adjust this one now on the remote pot. Hey, hey, there we go. God, it's just such a... Oh, um, <laughs> it's a miracle. Uh, we're at 122. We need to adjust to 125. Oh, man, I'm glad I got that figured out. It's just a... Look where it is now. It's about... It's about... Uh, you can see it's it's about 25 percent, 26 percent from all the way left, turned up about 26 percent. So <laughs> you gotta you have to tune these in combination with each other. So now with that set with that frequency pot set, I should be able to just use the remote board and see I can shift the image to the left, shift it to the right, and it goes out of out of frequency. Yeah, so I think we can lock that one in. The frequency pot now is locked in where it needs to be, and we got it going. So, hey, we have a working monitor now. <laughs> well, it was always working, but I think originally we had just proved. Well, actually, you know, we haven't proved anything. So let's turn this off. Now, if my hypothesis is correct with that tick, 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 and then it turns on, if my hypothesis of that H frequency pot being the cause of that is correct, it should just turn right on now. So let's find out. One, two, three. No. I don't know why it's doing that. I have no explanation for that. That is very odd. However, that could be a faulty flyback causing that. I don't want to rule that out. I've never had that happen before. It goes tick, 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 and then comes to life. But it is working. Let's adjust our B plus to 125. I'm going to get the screwdriver on the pot here, and let's watch the meter. We want to get to 125. 125.1. Oh, I, sorry, I was watching it from around. Hey, look at that, 125.0. Awesome. And it's working. Now, let's try it again here. Let's turn it off, and let's count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here we go. Let's turn it back on. One, two, three. Ah, that is just odd. Tick, 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 tick. Energize. Uh, uh, obviously, the chassis is now functional and working, but what's causing that? I don't know. I'm half tempted to replace the flyback and see if it if that's the cause, uh, just to, because I'm curious as hell now. I'm going to do that. I'm going to replace the flyback, and then I'll get this back on here, and we'll turn it back on for the first time. I promise I'll do it on camera with you guys to share in the knowledge with the new flyback on to see if that tick, tick, tick energize is caused by the flyback, because I'm curious as hell right now. But we do have a functional ch uh, chassis now, so the entire problem with this, and we're still dead on 125. Awesome. The whole problem with this was that each frequency pot, I think, being out of whack and our faulty uh, IC101 switch mode power supply chip. So I'm assuming, I never powered it up fully with all the original caps, but I'm sure it worked fine. So let me get the flyback changed out and we'll give this another try and see if that is caused by the flyback. All right, so I got the new flyback installed and I turned it on and it still did the same thing. Tick, 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 tick tick and then it came into life. So it turns out that the switch mode power supply chip that I had originally installed, uh, it worked, but under load it was not working properly. So I put another one in. So I mentioned before that I had a bag here with uh, three of these things and I used one pre on a previous project and then I had two left over. So I grabbed one of the two I had and I think it was a used one. Uh, so I put this one in and it worked. It fixed the problem, but under load it wasn't working properly. So I put another one in and I took the I took the socket out 
because I don't like running these with a socket because over time they can develop chip creep and the chip will creep in the socket and might not have a good connection and cause problems. So I only, I only put the socket in for testing. Uh, but for now, so I took this one out and I put a, another one in, so I only have one left now. But if we turn it on now, um, test pattern generator is on and I'm going to leave the new flyback installed because even if the original one was fine, uh, it, sooner or later it won't be. You know, the, the number one failure on these is the flyback drifting focus and brightness over time. So just to kind of nip it in the bud, I went ahead and just left. I'm going to leave the replacement flyback in there. But let's turn it on now and see what happens. One, two, three. Okay. It still kind of does the same thing, but it's not as pronounced as this one. So I'm going to call it a win. But if we look at our screen, there we go. Uh, I need to make some adjustments here. This is, I haven't done, haven't done any adjustments here. But let's do fog. Let me turn my light out here real quick. Hang on. All right. So let's get some adjustments real quick. Let's grab our focus. Uh, I hate trying to adjust these Neotech flybacks because of this design here. Um, there we go. Let's get our focus here. Ah, this, I kind of hate these things. Again. Ah, beautiful. Okay, now our flyback, we turn it down till the raster lines go away. There we go. Our brightness and contrast, let's turn those down all the way. That's brightness all the way down, contrast. Yeah, that's pretty good. Brightness, see now brightness, we don't have a black background anymore, down till it's black again, right there. And then contrast as needed, right there. Awesome. Okay, each position, roughly, I'll say right there. We're nope. This is way wrong. So that we have black on there, and not over here. Now, if I adjust it, we still don't have black. And yeah, so we need to shift this over a little bit more here on the supplemental H position pot, which is, well, I can't show you, but it's down in there. And we'll shift this over to roughly there's equidistant, but we're still way too wide. So we need to adjust our width coil here. Uh, and we should be able to bring this, do I go out with it or down? Okay, let's go down with it. Nope, that's about as, narrow as I can make it. Interesting. Well, again, this is a U5000, not actual Neotech, but uh, there's a jumper here for narrow and wide, that little red jumper. There's a W and an N. It's on the N for narrow. If I took it off of there and put on W, it would be even wider. So this appears to be as narrow as I could make it, but because this is not a dedicated Neotech uh, monitor. I'm not going to really worry too much about it, but we had an, the original uh, switch mode power supply chip was faulty, causing it to not turn on, and then we had a replacement that was faulty that was causing it to, you know, tick, 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 and then finally energize. But we're still at one... Oh, I lost my ground here. Let's hook my ground back up. We are still at 125.2. Pretty good. Uh, and yeah, we got a working chassis. Let's go through color bars look great again that's the tube and all that so let's see if we can put an actual video signal on this let me get the camera on the tripod and um, put an actual video signal from a board onto here to get a, some color adjustments how make make it look as good as we can see how well we can make it look but I want to turn this off one more time and we'll count to five in the meantime turn this off and Let's try again here. One, two, three. Okay, yeah, that's better. Yeah, it goes dent, dent, power. Let's turn it off. I think that's somewhat normal. Let's turn it back on. See, there it came right to life. Yeah, so absolutely. This was faulty under load. Give me the signal back here again. But, uh, yeah, turn this off. 
One more time. Let's count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's turn it back on. Okay, yeah. Doop. On, right on. So, yeah, I think we had a faulty chip under load. So, okay, let's get an actual video signal from an actual PCB hooked up and do some adjustments and see oh, how well we can make it look. Here we go. All right, so let's turn it on again and make sure that it comes right to life like we're expecting it to. We're all hooked up with a Mortal Kombat PCB so we can see what it looks like. Here we go. One, two, three. Right to life. Immediate. Absolutely, we had a faulty, a second faulty replacement uh, chip. Well, one faulty replacement chip, but two faulty chips. So, all right, there we go. And our B plus is 125.4, so we're good there. All right, so now, uh, we have our flyback set where it needs to be, so we'll turn our brightness up. Background's not black anymore. Back down till it's black. There we go. We'll turn contrast up. All right, that looks pretty good. We're too green, and we're I don't think we're too wide. Like, this is why, again, I always reiterate, I like using an actual PCB because the test pattern generator is great for what it is, but it can give you false indications of being too wide, not wide enough, uh, you know, issues at the top. So it's always best to use a real PCB whenever you can. So, we need to shift way over to the left, and oh yeah, wow, okay, each position. Um, all right, we should not have to use the supplemental H position pot on the chassis. That looks pretty good. Let's give it some coins. Uh, and we'll set our width and our position. Yeah, width is pretty good. I think that's actually as narrow as it gets, though. Yeah, that's all the way down. Yeah, that's as narrow as it gets, unfortunately, but this is not a dedicated Neotech tube, so that's probably, we got the full frame in there. There's a little bit of width there and a little bit of width there. Everything's on the screen, so that's probably pretty good. You know, I could live with, I could live with that completely if this was staying on this tube. But we're too green, so let's see if we can get a little bit of blue on here and a little bit more red. Let's give it some credits again. That's not bad. Um, let's do a little bit more red and green. blue. Well, what do you think? You think that looks pretty good? You know, it doesn't pick up so well in the camera. The red is a lot more pronounced in person, but it looks pretty, it, this does not do it justice. It looks pretty crappy in camera, but in person it's nice and red. So I don't know why the camera doesn't pick it up. Maybe it's the light, I can't say, but um, let's turn the light on and find out. Is that any better? Eh, not really. The reds are really deep in person, but for some reason on the camera it doesn't pick them up that well. Uh, we can turn up red here. That's too much. Yeah, in person it's not bad. But again, it doesn't matter. It's not staying on this tube. But I think that looks pretty good. So, okay. Uh, I think that's it. So we had a faulty switch mode power supply chip, and then we had a faulty replacement. Otherwise, I think that was really the only problem with this. Uh, I never powered it up uh, with, before I changed the caps and did the reflow and whatnot, so I can't specifically say whether or not uh, there were any other, other issues besides the switch mode power supply chip, but we, the main problem was the switch mode power supply chip U101 was faulty, keeping it from powering up, and then we put a faulty replacement in. Otherwise, I think that was about it. The flyback... Like I say, even if it's good, it's only a matter of time before it starts to drift focus and brightness. So we're going to leave this replacement in there. So that's about it. I'll let it run for a, normal, a number of hours like I normally do. Make sure nothing blows up and nothing goes haywire. But otherwise, uh, yeah. So thanks for watching. This was quite a journey, uh, more than I expected it to be. Um, like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. And there's more on the way as always. And stay tuned for those.